in today's video, I will be going over a few things you can do to really help boost the performance of Nox Player. If you find when playing your games, you are getting a lot of lag issues, maybe frame drop, or the games just keep freezing and stuttering, then with a bit of luck by following the methods in this video, we will be able to resolve those issues. But before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and it did help. And also we have almost hit 40,000 subscribers. Help us hit that goal before the end of February by hitting that subscribe button. And the first thing you want to do is just ensure you have the latest graphics card drivers installed for your graphics card. I will put some links in the description below on videos where I show you how to install graphics card drivers for certain graphics cards. Unfortunately, I haven't done one yet on a AMD graphics card, but I hope to do one pretty soon. The next thing we want to do is just make sure we have the latest Windows 10 updates installed. To check if you are using the latest updates, all you need to do is open the start menu and type in update, and you now need to click on check for updates. We now need to go ahead and click on check for updates and our system will now search to make sure we have the latest updates installed. As you can see, mine has found an update. It is actually for Microsoft Defender, but straight away it's downloaded it and it's starting to install it. And there we go, I am now all up to date. So once you have updated your graphics card drivers and updated Windows, Go ahead and launch up Nox Player and see if that resolved any of the performance issues you may be having. If it didn't, then the next thing we want to do is open Nox Player. Once you have Nox Player open, you now need to click on the settings cog in the top right hand corner and you then need to click on performance settings and you will now see a few different settings that we can adjust. And the very first setting is our CPU. As you can see, mine is currently set high and also my memory. If we go ahead and click on custom, you can actually type in a custom number for the amount of cores you want Nox Player to use and the amount of memory. So if we open up our task manager to do this, all you need to do is right click on the taskbar and then go task manager. We can then go across to performance. You can then see the amount of cores your CPU has. As you can see, mine has six. So I could go ahead and type in five you never want to type in the maximum amount. And then for the memory, I have 16 gig, but we actually need to type it in a different format. I can't just type in 16 gig, we need to type it in megabytes. So 1024 is the equivalent to one gig. So if I want to say, give the program eight gig, all I need to do is go 1024 and then go times, let's go eight and then that equals 8192. So I can then go ahead and type that in here. And there we go, once you have typed in your CPU and the memory you want to use, go ahead and press save settings and you then need to restart Nox Player. And once Nox Player has restarted, we can then click on the settings cog again and go down to performance settings. And as you can see, it still has my custom figures. So go ahead and launch your game now after applying your new custom figures or just changing the performance to high and see how it runs. If you can't select that many cores, um, this could actually be due to the fact that you need to enable virtualization in your BIOS. I will put a link in the description below on how to do that as well, but the video will be for my motherboard, but it will be very similar to yours as well. The next thing we want to take a look at is which graphics rendering mode you want to use. So you have two options. We have OpenGL or we have DirectX. I actually find OpenGL to run a lot smoother than DirectX, but this can always depend on what sort of system you have. So if you have a really decent graphics card and you have quite a decent system, then DirectX might actually run a lot better for your system. So definitely switch between the two and see which one makes your games run smoother. And also it does depend on what sort of game you are trying to play, depending on which rendering mode it prefers. So if there is a certain game that's laggy, then switch between the two options. 
The next thing we have resolution settings. As you can see, mine is currently set at 1600 by 900. The first thing you are going to want to do if you're still having issues with lag and frame drop, change it to the lowest number. So on mine, it would be 960 by 540. Change it to the lowest resolution, save it, and then launch the game. See if it runs smoother. If it does, then slowly work your way up the resolution until you find the resolution when it starts to lag again and then drop it down a res. After playing around with all these settings and if you're still having issues, the next thing we want to click on is game settings. Here we can set the max frame rate a game can use, which is the very top option. Go ahead and set this to 30 and then see how the game runs when it's set to 30 max on the frame rate. Changing it to 30 can help reduce lag and frame drop issues in game. If we scroll down a little bit more, we also have open ASTC textures. Go ahead and turn this off and see if that helps. And then the option below, enable rendering cache, I recommend you turn this on as it can help improve the frames per second. After playing around with all the settings in Noxplayer, if you're still not having any luck, then the next thing we want to do is open up the Windows Start menu. And you now need to type in Defrag. We then want to open up Defragment and Optimize Drives. And you now need to optimize your drives. But if you have a solid state drive, don't optimize this drive as it can reduce the life of the drive. As you can see, I do have an SSD, so I won't optimize that drive. But any other hard disk drives, go ahead and optimize them, and that can really help with performance. The next thing we want to do, you need to have Nox Player running to do this, is to open up the Task Manager. You need to right click on Nox Player, and then you now need to click on Go to Details. We now need to right click on Nox Player, and you now need to go Set Priority and select Above Normal, and go Change Priority. Now go ahead and launch a game and see if that helped fix the issues. If unfortunately that didn't resolve the issues you're having, then the next thing you want to do is just make sure no security software is blocking Nox Player, as in like blocking the virtualization and stuff like that. So it's definitely worth disabling the security, just temporary, but remember you won't be protected from threats while it's disabled, and then see how well Nox Player runs because security programs can cause a lot of issues when it comes to running emulators. If unfortunately none of this has resolved the problems, then the only other thing I can recommend you try is to turn off any other background programs you are running. So say if you've got Firefox open, or at the moment I've got Task Manager open and I've got optimized drives, make sure you have everything closed and then try and run your game because you don't want to have anything run in the background as these could be hogging resources that you want to be using on your emulator. So shut down your web browser and everything else. And unfortunately that does bring us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then hit the like button below and subscribe for more computer sluggish tutorials.